In this video, we're gonna talk about how to filter your data. As always, when working in R, we use the library function to call the tidyverse package. And the tidyverse is a great way to expand the vocabulary that we have within R. I'm not gonna get into it right now. If you don't know what the tidyverse is, go and have a look at my video on packages. Once you've called the tidyverse, of course, you've got some built-in data sets that you can practice with. And msleep is a great one. If we say view msleep, we can have a look at that. Of course, we've got columns. These are our variables. And our first column is name. These are the names of the different mammals that we're gonna look at. And for each mammal, we've got a whole lot of variables. We've got a whole lot of information, including how much their total sleep is and things like body weight, brain weight, et cetera, et cetera. Super duper interesting, great data set to do a little bit of practicing on. We might not want to use all of this data. In other words, we don't want to necessarily use every single row. We might want to extract out just a very specific subset of data, and we want to do that by a very specific set of criteria. And that's what we're talking about today. That's the filter function. Now I'm going to walk you through 10 different ways that you can use the tidyverse vocabulary to filter your data. If you want to learn about R programming, then you have come to the right place. On this YouTube channel, we're creating R programming videos on everything. I'll just talk you through what's on the screen at the moment, right? We're starting off by creating a new object. I'm just calling that my data. My data is essentially a copy of msleep, and it's the data set that we're going to create that's actually going to just extract out the subset of rows that we're interested in, right? So msleep is equal to my data. And then, right, our little pipe operator here is the same as saying, and then we go to the next line, select. This is where we choose the variables that we want. These are the columns. We want name and sleep total. That's all we're going to work with for now. And then, right, we pop in another pipe operator there. We filter, and this is what we're talking about today. And in this case, we're gonna filter by, we're gonna extract out only those rows, only the observations, only the mammals for whom sleep total is more than 18, right? So if I push, command enter, I've only got mammals where the sleep total is more than 18. Now the second thing we can do with filter is we can pop in this little exclamation mark. And that is basically saying, for this particular criterion, I want you to do the opposite, right? So if we push enter at the moment, command enter, now we can see the exact opposite has happened, right? It is identified or it's extracted out, or it's filtered out only those observations, only the mammals for whom sleep total is now less than 18. Of course, we could have used a less than sign. I'm just showing you how it works. Now let's start talking about how we can have more than one criteria being used, right? So in this particular case, we're selecting a few more variables because there's more stuff we want to work with. So we've got name, order, body weight, sleep total. And then we want to filter by, now we want to extract only those observations, only the rows where the order is equal to primate. We use the double equals because this is actually a question we're asking of the filter. So we're not making a statement that order equals primate, it is the same as, and instead we're asking a question, we're saying filter out for each observation, for each row, ask the question that in the, in the variable order, is the, is, the, is the value equal to primates? And if it is, extract out that particular row, right? So that's how this is, that's why we use the double equal to sign there. Then we've got a comma, and the comma in this case is the same as saying and, right? So we want to extract out rows where order, the variable order is equal to primates and body weight is more than 20. Both of those criteria have to be met for any particular row to be extracted out. Let's have a look at what that looks like. And of course our filter has worked. So we've extracted out only rows, only observations where the order variable is equal to primate and the body weight is more than 20. Right, the fourth thing we can do with this filter function is we can say or, when we're looking at multiple criteria for extracting rows, we can say or instead of and. Right, when we said and, we were saying that both of these criteria, the primates and the body weight more than 20, both of those criteria had to be met for any particular row to be extracted out and included in our my data data set. Now we're saying or, and that means that if either of these two criteria are met, that particular row needs to be extracted out and included in the data set. Let's have a look at what that looks like. So now we've got a much larger data set, right? It's got the same number of variables, the same number of columns, but we've got many, many more rows included, many more observations included. And the reason is, instead of saying and, instead of it being a requirement that each observation that gets included meets the criteria of both being a primate and having a sleep total more than 20. Now we've said or, so if either of those criteria are met, that particular observation can be included. And of course you can see that for each of these observations, at least one of those two criteria are met. 
Now we can use this, this OR operator multiple times. So in this particular example, I've said filter the name variable and include, include observations where the name is equal to cow or name is equal to dog or name is equal to goat. Let's push control, command, enter, and we'll see what that does. And of course, as expected, it's filtered out just the rows that meet this, that particular set of criterion. And we've got cow, dog, and goat right here. A slightly more elegant way of doing exactly the same thing is we can create what we call a concatenation. So that's this little C here, and in brackets, it's a collection of values. And we're saying here, filter out where name is in anywhere within this concatenation, right? And if we push command enter, of course, we get the exact same thing. Number seven, we can use between, right? So within our filter function, we've got this argument and we're saying, we want to filter out any observations, any rows where sleep total is between, and then we put these two values here, 16 and 18. Let's push command enter and see what that does. And voila, we've extracted out just the observations that meet the criteria of being between 16 and 18. And notice that it's included 18 in that. Number eight, here we're gonna filter out only observations or only rows where the criteria that we're looking at is observations where the value is very near to or close to a certain value within a given variable. So we've got our filter function. Our argument is, look, within the sleep total variable, we want to find anything that's close to 17. How close must it be? Well, it needs to be within 0.5. And if we look at the my data data set that we've created, it's extracted out only observations that are near to 17 within a 0.5 parameter. Number nine, in this case, we want to filter for only those observations where for a particular variable, we have a missing value, right? And in this case, we're saying filter is NA, and then we're looking at the variable conservation. And as expected, we've got a data set that only has values where conservation was an NA or a missing value. And number 10, this is exactly the opposite of that. If we want to have only observations where there isn't a missing value for a particular variable, we put a little exclamation mark in front of the is NA and we get the exact opposite. And boom, shakalaka, we've got a data set now that has no missing values in the conservation variable, right? So if we go down this column, we're not gonna find any missing values. So if you are serious about learning how to analyze data and you wanna learn R programming, then hit the subscribe button now and hit the little bell notification if you wanna get notified of future videos. Please hang up and try again.